Hey, what's up guys? Brandon here for RC Flight School. Today I'm giving you a really cool little tutorial on pre and post flight checklists. What does that mean? Well, these are things that you would want to check every time you fly your helicopter, before you take it up, and after you're done flying. Little things like these will guarantee that you don't have a day of just buying parts and you'll have a lot of good, enjoyable hours on your helicopter. So let's get started. The most important thing, the most important thing, especially on a helicopter like this, is to make sure that before you fly, you turn the radio on first. So I turn on the radio, I make sure that's ready, and then I plug in the helicopter. Well, I see so many people turning on the helicopters first, and then the radios. On this particular model, because this is a spectrum-powered helicopter, the little receiver goes into bind mode, and then doesn't link to the radio, and then everyone thinks they got a bad helicopter or something went wrong. Really, all you got to remember is turn on the remote first, and you won't have those problems. Now, if you got the remote on first and you plug it in the helicopter, specifically this one, it has a gyro on board. You need to make sure that as soon as you plug it in, set it down on a flat surface and let it be still. You got to wait for it. You see that the lights popped on. Now the gyro is ready and it's turned on. If you moving it around after you just plugged it in or handling it, the gyro doesn't know what still is. Every time you plug it in, you got to set it down so the gyro knows, okay, this is what it means to be still. If you're moving it around, it's going to think that that means it's still, and then it's going to fly extremely radically. It'll barely be flyable. Don't even try it. So remember, radio on first, plug in the helicopter, and set it down and let it sit. Obviously, you want to make sure you're flying on a fully charged battery. That's very important. So that before you're flying, top off the pack. Do these things, and you know your helicopter is ready for flight. Now, let's say you've landed pretty harshly in the past few flights, or a full-on crash. Here's a few things you want to keep in mind. I'm going to unplug the helicopter, turn off the radio, last thing off, put it out of the way, and let's take a close look at the helicopter. There's a few things you want to check over on these guys before you fly them. If you got a new helicopter, chances are everything's in good working order, but if you've flown it, crashed it, or it's just relatively old, it's a good little checklist to go through. First thing is your fly bar on top here, or this could be, some people just call it a gyro. You want to make sure it's very free moving. I'm just hitting with my hand here, and it's bouncing back and forth, so I know it's not binding. Very important that that can move as freely as possible because this is what keeps your helicopter stable. If this is tight, locked down, or binding, your helicopter is, again, going to fly very radically. It won't have any stabilization. Next thing is to check the link on that very same fly bar. So if we look on the top here, we have one small link that hooks it up. Make sure that the link is centered on the ball and as well as the top. Make sure it's linked on there. And again, free moving. We know that's good. Check for nicks and dings on your blades. If you got a blade with a lot of dings on the leading edges right here, or let's say you got one that's cracked or missing a piece, yeah, the helicopter might fly, but I bet you it doesn't fly like it did when it was new. You might get a little bit of vibration. It won't hover very stable. So check both sets of your blades. Next, we'll move down to the lower set of blades. Here's where all the control comes from. The lower set of blades is actually what tips your helicopter forward and backward, right and left. So we want to make sure that everything's in good working order. Now, if I zoom in real tight here, you'll see that we do have a link that is pressed over the ball link. So right here, you can see the ball sticking out and the link is all the way against the blade. If you look on the other side, you see it's resting properly on the ball where it should be. So little things like this can make the difference between crashing your helicopter and buying parts or a full day of flying. So keep an eye on little things like this. I'm going to pop it out where it should be on the end of the ball. And now you can see it's perfect right where it should be. It's, the link is free. If we move the links with your hand, it's a good idea to test them out move them around and make sure that they're not binding. These are nice and free, but they're not too loose. So you don't want a link that's so loose that it's got a little bit of play in it. This is just free enough that I can move these just by touching them and I know they're in good shape. So obviously same would go for the bottom here where they attach to the swash plate. I'm checking to make sure that they're on the ball link and not pushed on too far. They're freely moving, which they are, so we know that's in good shape. Now if we move on to the swash plate, on this particular helicopter, I'll pop the body off to make it easier to see. The swash plate is two piece. We have the lower piece that's fixed. This is what our linkage rod goes to here. This is the lower piece of the swash plate. And the upper piece, that's what the link's attached to. If you look very carefully, you'll see that the upper piece moves, it rotates, and the lower piece stays still. Now those two pieces are connected by a bearing. And at a very hard crash, these two pieces can separate. Now if you look here, this is a properly aligned swash plate. This lower piece and this upper piece are pressed together as tightly as they can be. If there's a huge gap in here, right where I'm sticking the pen, if these two pieces are separated, you won't have any control because the control coming from this rod to the swash plate isn't transferred up through the linkages. If these are separated, it's just lost in all that slop. 
So make sure that that's pushed together tightly. I'm not going to pop mine apart to show you because the more times this gets popped apart, the looser it gets. And if yours is coming apart every flight, it's time to replace the swash plate. Yeah, there are ways you can make it tighter. You can glue it, make it a little bit more stiff, make it kind of like new again, but nothing beats a brand new one. So if yours is worn out, I'd opt for a new one. You can always try to fix it if you'd like. Now that we have known that the swash plate is in good working order, we're going to check all our shafts. I'll zoom out a little bit to show you what I mean. Check the, low, the outer shaft first. This is the set of blades. I'm just spinning it with my fingers to make sure that it spins extremely freely. You see if I hit this, it spins around by itself. Nothing's stopping it. If you turn this like I'm doing now and it stops right away or it seems like it's binding or it's stiff, check for hair in your bearings. I've seen this all too many times that people have animals at home or they're flying on carpet and hair gets picked up in the bearing right here and there's bearings on the bottom as well. Now, if there's any hair in there, that's sucking all the power from your motors and you're going to get really short flight times and it'll take a lot of power to lift off from the ground. So make sure that it's spinning freely like this. If I hit mine, you see it spins real freely, no problems. And same goes for the upper set of blades. Spin it with your hand, it should spin extremely freely just like this. Again, same goes for this guy. If you got any hair, you're flying in carpet or dusty conditions, you haven't cleaned it in a while, right up in here there's a bushing to clean and on the bottom there's a bearing that you want to check. That might be a bushing on the bottom too. But in either case, if there's hair in there, it's time to take it apart and clean it. If you're interested in how to take that apart, check out our previous video. I showed you how to disassemble the whole helicopter. So we know our blades are spinning freely. Now what about our shafts? We want to make sure that the shaft is straight. And I touched on this in the other video. If you hold the helicopter level and spin your upper set of blades and keep an eye on this hub right here, fix your eye on that hub as you're spinning it. And if you see it wobbling, you know that it's bent. Ours is nice and straight. I don't see any wobbling side to side, so I know that's in good shape. Next, I want to check to make sure the shaft's tight. So I'm pulling up and down on the shaft to make sure there's no slop. And I have none here. This is perfect. If there's any slop on that shaft, well, again, all the energy, the linkage control here is being soaked up by that slop, and you're going to have a very poorly flying helicopter. So these are all great things to check before and after you fly. Before is very important to make sure the helicopter is going to react like you expect it to. And after is important, especially if you're crashing. If you're hitting the ground or hitting some walls, keep an eye on all these little things. Make sure that they're free and all these little linkages are set up correctly. Doing all this will ensure that you have a great helicopter that lasts a long time and you'll spend minimal amount of money on parts. Now, if you guys have any other questions on how to maintain a helicopter or anything you think you should do on your specific helicopter, if you got something else for pre- and post-flight checklists, comment below. Tell me what you got to say. I'll answer all the questions there. I appreciate you guys watching these videos. We'll talk to you real soon.